the CEO of Query, the company that helps people turn text messages into reminders that they retrieve online. So I started Query in 2006, or the idea for Query in 2006, when I was traveling, commuting every day from San Francisco down to Mountain View, right, to work at Tommy Networks right down the road. And every day on the train, I would read a newspaper, the Wall Street Journal. You guys remember newspapers? Uh, so I read the Wall Street Journal every day, <laughs> which I still do, mind you, in this paper format. And, uh, and I constantly have all these articles that I thought I'd like to forward this out to friends, colleagues, and family. But I had no good way to remember and find those articles later. So what did I do? I stacked them up. At the end of each week, I painstakingly searched online for those articles to send them out to friends. So I thought there's got to be a better way to do this. I'm on the train. I'm reading the newspaper. I've got my cell phone. How can, how can I use my cell phone to indicate the articles I'm interested in so when I get to my office, I've got them waiting for me to forward out? So that was the idea behind Query. And we took a step back, me and a couple friends, and said, actually, there's a broader problem here, which is we have these offline existences that are not connected to our online existences. There's constantly things we see in here that we want to remember when we're back at our computer. No good way to do that. So that's what Query, that problem that Query solves. We then thought that further, companies, media companies, advertisers actually want us to get to their websites even more than we want to remember them. So we built Query as a platform for advertisers and media companies to help connect their offline audiences online. So let's talk about a specific example. So for those of you that were in the earlier session, uh, I was watching this, this great company, iJob, and I thought, well, I'd really like to check that out when I get back to my office. So <clears throat> what did I do? I had no pen and paper. I had my laptop uh, in my bag, so I thought, oh, I'll use Query. So all I did was simply text IJOP to 59479, which is Query short code. When I get back to my home or my office, I'll check my email as I regularly do. And I'll get an email from Query reminding me that I sent this in. I'll click on the See It Now button, and then I'll get straight to Query.com. I'll get a bunch of different search results from different search engines. The first one is IJOP's website. I'll click IJOP. And right there, I'm at iJot's website, and I'm browsing further, learning more about the service, and potentially how we may be able to integrate with them one day. So two clicks, and I'm right exactly where I want it to be. And then at my query homepage, I've got all the things I queried over the last couple of days. Books that friends recommended, uh, websites that I saw, bus advertisements, um, restaurants that I want to remember to review or to eat at. So anything that I see or hear offline that I would want to remember online, simply use a text message and remember it. So what problems are we actually solving? First problem, media cues are everywhere. The uh, estimates now research are three to 5,000 media cues or more per day that we experience for the average person. That's pretty insane. Two, our memories are getting worse. <laughs> so it used to be, back in the day, that we had to use our memory to remember things like phone numbers and birthdays. Now we've got address books and Facebook. Don't really have to do that anymore, so our memories are actually getting worse. Third problem, <laughs> people are lazy, right? We can, all, we can all admit to this, but the average person, certainly the average American person, is not going to use their cell phone to put in a note and synchronize it with their computer when they get back and then process that note in some way. And no, the audience in Silicon Valley in general do not count as average users. Emailing yourself, you say, why don't I email myself? Well, it's an unnatural behavior, really. And it means that when you get the email, you have to do something to process it, which means copying and pasting. And again, we're lazy. Mobile web. Mobile web is great for getting snippets of information when you have the, the time to do it. But for doing serious processing, it's slow, it's difficult, it's inefficient. And best case, optimized 3G phone, you're going to see 5% of the website that you're looking for. So that's where Prey comes in. We solve those problems for you. And we let you remember things that you think about, you see, or you hear while you're on the go when you get back to your computer. So how does it work? We're input agnostic. What does that mean? You can send us emails, you can use voice via JOT integration, or text messaging. We're focused on text messaging uh, very heavily. Uh, why? Text messaging is a huge and growing market. 192 million people sent a text message last year, uh, volume growth of 130% over the prior year, 30, over 30 billion text messages a month. That's just in the United States. So again, for advertisers, media companies, we drive offline audiences online. How does that differ from traditional mobile marketing companies? They tether you to your phone. They, you send in a text message, they send a text message back. We're not tethering you to your phone, we're taking you back online to a rich experience. 
We're, we're building a community that's proving and doing this behavior today, using their cell phones to remember things online. And that community is viral. So just like your Facebook news feeds, you're able to, based on your privacy settings, share what you're interested in with your friends. And what does that do for advertisers? That means that one text message, hundreds of page views. So great pilot customers, GamePro, since last June, HGTV, and Ford at the New York Auto Show, which starts tomorrow. We ask you for your email address. Once you, once you reply with your email address, your, your cell phone number and email is associated in our database, and you'll never have to do it again. If you're already signed up, we've already got it, but that's the simple way that we do it. That's exactly why we integrated with Jump, so you can use your voice to send in a query, uh, which is a great service, and they use transcriptions. You can get it in a query that way. Uh, so we definitely don't advocate using text messaging while driving. Actually, there's a, there's a large misconception about text messaging. Text messaging is actually the most ubiquitous mobile service used today. So by close to 80, what? By, by population. population. By population. So close to 80% of Americans are, are, are using text messaging. And it's demographically, it's actually not just teenagers. So and, you know, between 25 and 54, there's actually a huge uh, use of text messaging. In fact, people from age 18 to 30 use more text messaging than people age 13 to 18. Um, and then our differentiation, we have the, the consumer service, but we offer to advertisers or to media companies the way to drive people online today. So it's not a, a visual barcode that can be used in five years. It's a simple text messaging call to action that can drive people online today. The way that it works is, you can see here, we have a Game Pro magazine we've been working with since June of last year, working with Ford, working with HGTV. A call to action goes in some offline piece of media, whether it's a billboard, a print ad, an article in the New York Times, and you text a particular keyword to our short code. We drive that user online, so when they get back online, and the idea for the revenue model is whether that's an advertiser or a media company, we charge them on a success-based uh, uh, system to actually drive that user online. So we've measured exactly how many people that call to action is driving online, and then also there's the viral aspect where that, that is then discovered by all the community query as well.